Hello and welcome. This is Alistair Christie. This is going to be a very short introduction into some of the capabilities of tclient dataset. We are basically going to write a very small application and persist the data to an XML file. But first, a quick introduction as to how the VCL does data awareness. We are going to discuss tdataset, tdatasource, and some data aware controls. The lowest level we are going to look at today is tdataset. tdataset is more of an abstract class. You'll never use an instance of tdataset directly, but you will use instances of its children a lot. The descendants of tdataset are the components that actually provide you access to the data and enable you to do your CRUD operations. That's create, read, update, and delete. Here I've shown some examples of tdataset. Next we have tdatasource. This is the conduit to which your data aware controls talk to your dataset. You hook your control, a tdb grid and a tdb memo in this instance, to your tdata source and your tdata source to your tdata set. You are then able to modify your data without writing any code whatsoever. This is pretty much what we're going to do today. In our demo, we are going to write a small application for storing some customer information, in particular their name, address, and a comment. With that, let's get started. As always, let's start by creating a new VCL Forms application. Now, let's put a tclient dataset, a tdata source, a tdb grid, a tdb navigator, a tpanel, and a t fit button. Okay. Um, let's align this to the bottom. Align that to the top. And hook it up to our data source. Likewise with the grid. And we'll align that to, the, to client. Um, our data source needs to port, point to our client data set. And well, let's shift this over to here. And call it close kind close and we'll um, change its anchors if I can find them. Here we go. To bottom right. Now let's define some fields for our client data set. We'll add surname of type string, maybe that's 30 characters. First name, also 30, and comment, or comments, and it's a memo, we've got a thousand, um, and we'll specify a file name so that uh, things get saved. And we'll save our project. Now let's um, create our data set and run it. Okay, and, and if I close that and run it again, and our data is persisted. If I run this again, you'll notice that we've got this memo comments, which I can't change. So we'll add a DB memo and we'll check that on here. Get 
get it positioned how we want it. And let's go find those anchors again. And hook it up to our data source. And we also have to select the field. And we want to get rid of this uh, comments. So I double click on the DB grid and add all fields and remove first name. Oops. <laughs> remove comments. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and now when you run it, I can add um, add some comments. Lastly, let's give our form a better name. And okay. And this is our application with no code written. We've written a fully functional application with persistent data all in just over six minutes. And as I said earlier, we've written no code to achieve it. I hope after watching this, you're thinking, this is easy. And yes, I'd agree with you. Once you're familiar with the VCL, you can tune out quite powerful applications with relatively little effort. A few notes, however, the customers.xml file will be saved in your application directory. And Vista will not approve of this once your application is installed into program files. It will work, however, as Vista will virtualize your file and store it elsewhere, but this is bad practice. The easiest way to fix this is to change the properties on the program shortcut and specify the start in option where you want the data saved. Here I've just put it into my documents, which our custom application will be permitted to write to. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and I hope to bring you something more shortly.